Hi guys and welcome back to a Girl Talks Formula 1's podcast. For today's guest, we have not only a Formula 3 driver, but also a Formula 2. With us, Italian talent Matteo Nanini started karting since he was really young and has more sports in his genes. He has escalated quite quickly from Formula 4 to Formula 3 and competing at the same time in Formula 2. Ready to hear more about his journey in 3, 2, 1, let's go. Hi everybody and welcome back to another episode of a Girl Talks. Formula One. Today I have a really important guest for you, which we've been wanting to interview for a while, but we're going to start this interview a little bit differently. I'm going to be having two guests with me, a comeback, Bea Samuner with us, and Formula Two and Formula Three driver, Matteo Nanini. How are you guys? Welcome to the podcast. Welcome back, Bea. Thank you, Manena. Thank you so much. It's good to see you again. So nice. Ciao, Matteo. Come stai? Hi. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, all good. I'm yeah, happy to be here. Okay, Matteo. So before we start with the interview, tell us how many languages you speak, because you speak quite a few, right? I mean, uh, of course, uh, Italian, English, and... Uh, I studied Spanish quite a lot uh, when I was a bit younger, like for uh, two, three years. Yeah, I mean, I speak also Spanish, but not as good as uh, English or Italian okay. because I don't have the, let's say, the opportunity to speak it, to speak uh, it because like in the paddock, I speak English or right. it's the most common used language. So, yeah. Well, you can speak in Spanish with me anytime. And as if the name didn't already give out his nationality, Matteo, of course, is from Italy and he started racing quite young. You were around seven years old when you started racing, right? Yeah, it was, uh, let's say, quite a special case because uh, when I was younger, I tried many different sports such as like football, basketball, but never, I never think about racing. Uh, even if I really enjoy the like uh, toys of cars or watching Formula One or whatever. And uh, I had the chance to try a little go-kart, a rental one. And uh, once I tried it, yeah, like I fell in love with it. And I, I took that cart, my my daddy bought it. And that was the, the beginning of, uh, of everything. That's so nice. And before we start getting a little bit more into your career, I want to know how you and Bea actually started working together that case was uh, <laughs> if i'm not wrong uh, random because uh, we, we met in barcelona for the yeah. uh, f1 test uh, because it was snowing uh, i don't know which year was, was that i don't remember 2018 20. and yeah and we met there and uh, that was the say where the journey started anything uh, to add bea to the little well, yeah. story yeah, actually, before that, um, I, I actually was on Facebook and uh, Graziana, which is uh, someone who actually is in Matteo's entourage, reached out to me and we decided through her to meet in Barcelona. So it was uh, the beginning. Uh, it, we were at the Williams Hospitality. Wow. And then, yeah, I just started working remotely for Matteo and, uh, and then we we just got on with the journey that's so awesome because i remember when i first interviewed you it was still kind of the beginning for you and mateo right because it i think i interviewed you almost a year ago it's been so crazy how time has flown by it's been so long already yeah it's been a very intense season it was uh before the actual beginning of this right. super season we we have uh, lived and we have endured with covid and uh, many things happening so tell us how has covid affected both of you in your career well uh actually it's uh pretty much the same thing i mean uh, <laughs> <laughs> i mean i've been traveling not as much as uh, i would have liked to but still i got to to do my stuff even though international traveling it's been limited for obvious reasons but hopefully in 2022 everything will be back to normal right and for you Matteo how has COVID impacted yeah. your career as a driver yeah let's say that um, on the school side uh, luckily I had the COVID <laughs> because uh, with that uh, I am able to manage much better um, let's say my studies in school because I, I can follow the classes also remotely like if I'm somewhere else than at school I can anyway follow the school the lesson by my laptop on the racing side instead it was mainly about last year so 2020 where I mean the season was all together basically every weekend we were having a race I mean yeah I didn't really like it obviously because I couldn't enjoy properly a full season because right. from a full season it became like only 
uh, two months of uh, of racing, and that's uh, that's over. And uh, on the other side, it was much better for my, for my experience because uh, for sure being uh, in a racing car every weekend is much more helpful than racing once uh, once a month or once every two months like this year. Obviously, uh, it was like all the F1 paddock and F3 and same as F2, all a big bubble. So we couldn't really have a lot of um, possibility to speak maybe with fans or whatever. And that was the real big pity for me because, you know, racing in a circuit where uh, I could see all empty uh, grandstands and whatever was not really enjoyable. That's so true because I feel fans are a big part of motorsports. They're pretty much what hype everything up. I mean, I feel the energy, you know, the screaming and all the voices and all the partying. I feel that's super important to give motorsports a slightly bit more touch of adrenaline. But what you said is so true. School-wise, it was so convenient for you to have it online because this season you were actually in two seasons, right? Formula 3 and Formula 2. How did you yes. manage to balance all of that? Yeah, so at the beginning, the plan was even not to race with HWA. But uh, once I went there, they said they proposed me to to do this uh, new program, so racing both categories, which was not really allowed. But with them, we, we got, uh, let's say, a sort of special license by by the FIA to, to make me uh, race in both championship in the same year uh, which uh, I mean it w- I will be the only one because already from next year the format will be the same as the previous one so F2 and F3 same weekend so this will not be possible anymore yeah apart from that uh, for sure uh, I was really happy with that opportunity because my experience uh, grown a lot uh, because you know I would have more or less a double of the experience because double of races, double of uh, practices. Then uh, with HRB, I had to stop and I had the possibility by from campus to race with them because they also lost uh, one driver. Yeah, I was really grateful for that. Yeah, but anyway, it was even not that uh, stressful physically because uh, the races were quite uh, far. I mean, uh, we're not every weekend, but there was a lot of time between every race. That now, for example, F2, uh, they did the race in Sochi with us in F3, and the next race is in two months in December, which is quite a lot far. Actually, this season for me was a bit too short because uh, <laughs> I didn't, uh, I'm not really tired of it, and I, I would have liked to continue it until the end of the year. The season for F3 at least is already over. Yeah, and now true. I'll see what uh, what they will do next year. So you would have wanted more races. You're not tired yet. That's so funny. But your career is actually growing really fast because you joined Formula 4 in 2019, right? In the UAE Formula 4. And you actually won that title. Is that correct? Yeah, it's correct. How it has... Yeah, that journey been for you because you've grown really fast. Well, obviously, my goal as a racing driver is to to become an F1 driver, Formula 1 driver. Also because if we see, let's say, at the nationality where I'm from, the main nationality is so Italian. There are not a lot of Italians in F1. So True. that's my goal, to, to be there as, uh, as Italian. Even if uh, I would say that for us is a bit more difficult because in Italy, I, yeah, I can't say... I have to say the truth, it's a bit difficult for us as Italian driver even to, to continue racing because as we know, up to now, this sport is becoming a bit of business and... Uh, it's very important to to have the full budget to be able to have a good car and uh, to be able to to show what you can do because yeah. uh, even if you are not in a one of those top teams uh, it's very difficult to get the result you want and so to achieve your dream but anyway i'm i'm really pushing up for that it was uh, let's say quite short up to now my career 2019 as you said we did the formula 4 and in the same year the plan was to do the italian formula 4 but i changed it and i did some races in a um, regional and in Renault. Then I moved to the FIA F3 with the Answer Motorsport, which was up to say maybe I would say not that bad because with the experience I had, I didn't expect even to score, let's say, even if not a lot of good results, like in personal, which got a third podium race too. This year, I mean, was not really happy about the result I got because uh, for sure I, 
My ambition was to finish higher in the championship, but from the middle of the season, we had some issues also from the team side. It was obvious because they, we changed the team manager quite a lot. Changing, changing three team managers in like two months is, uh, <laughs> means that there is something wrong inside. But yeah, anyway, I'm sure that with this year especially, I show what I can do if I have a good car. And I'm really happy for that because uh, anyway, I receive a lot of calls from different teams that they would like to have me the next season for F2 or F3 or whatever. And this is very cool, I mean, for me, because, uh, I mean, they say that I'm a good driver and that's the most important thing at the end. And you are a really good driver. I mean, your career has grown so much. Just a little pause between that. In 2012, you actually were on the podium every single race on champion card and you finish on third place on that category yeah yeah it's correct finishing on the podium every single race you have to be a good driver of course and what you said about formula one becoming a business is actually quite true i mean a lot of drivers have actually stated that for example nick de Vries, this season he had so much big expectations about joining formula one and he said it himself something similar to what you said he doesn't yeah. want to join formula one just to join he wants to join to actually win is, do you think the same way as him regarding Formula One? Yeah, yeah, I think the same because, uh, I mean, yeah, for sure being an F1 driver can have uh, is positive things, but also being always there in the back and, uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe being in front of your teammate, it's, yeah, it doesn't really have a lot of sense at the end. Uh, it depends, obviously, if you then stay there, but you have the possibility to grow and to to go to a better team. That is uh, that could have sense, but uh, to now it's uh, you need to have, uh, as, as we say always uh, with my dad, uh, you need to be a good driver. You need to have the good uh, persons behind that can push you politically inside, and you need to have the budget full covered, so by sponsors or or your family or whatever. And these are the three main points that you need to, to reach that, uh, that Formula One. That's so true. I think motorsports is from the biggest, you know, environments that need to have such an important team behind, especially since it's kind of a lonely sport in the sense that you're always traveling on your own. I feel that your team eventually ends up becoming your family. Yeah. Yeah, it's like this, because if you think like there are thousands of drivers all around the world that want to reach uh, Formula One, and to to do that, you need to be the best uh, of these uh, thousands of people, and to need to be the best, you need to have everything perfect from the budget, from the persons around, from the team. Otherwise, uh, they will pass you. So true. And speaking of Formula One, tell us who is your favorite driver this season? <laughs> I really like the young the young drivers, like as we saw Norris or Verstappen. There are a lot of good drivers, I would say. I don't really have one that I prefer to, to another. To now, until the end, the last race, uh, F1 for me became a bit more uh, cool, cool, no? Uh, to watch. Yeah, I mean, there exciting. is uh, more emotion. Uh, yeah, yeah, more, yeah, exactly. Then if you think like one year ago, two years ago, I mean, after the start, then the race, I was, uh, they were quite boring. I mean, me, I was yeah. falling asleep. <laughs> Instead, now it's, uh, it's much, uh, much better. Like the race in Sochi, for me, was really fun. Maybe so fun. this is also due to the weather forecast that is changing everything. I don't know if it, if with the sun it would have been the same, but anyway, yeah, I really like that. I mean, I think with the sun, Lando Norris would have gotten his first victory, which is something I believe we all wanted to see. But yes, yeah, Sochi is normally not the most exciting circuit. And this season, this season, it's so hard to choose your favorite Grand Prix because every single Grand Prix has had something special happening. I mean, Sochi was just crazy. All the results were unpredictable. And what you said, previous season, seasons behind, the results were always so predictable. We always knew who was going to win, Lewis Hamilton. Yeah. So this season, do you really think that Max Verstappen can take away that title from Lewis Hamilton? Mm, I don't think so, but... Uh, no way! I, I don't know. <laughs> Because uh, if we see also previously from half of the season and, and soon, uh, Hamilton was always having something more compared to, to all the others. And he was always uh, coming back to the championship. I don't know. Also looking forward uh, to the new cars, I, well, I don't know who is going to win the championship. It depends because also like Verstappen was starting last and arrived seconds. And this changed a lot also on the helmet on what we were thinking. Oh, if he arrived first and he arrived tenth. And... 
Yeah. That's so true. And I mean, there's still quite a few races left for the season. And Max Verstappen is only two points behind from Lewis Hamilton. So anything can happen. I mean, team-wise, I felt that everybody thought Red Bull was going to win this season. But as the results are going so far, I don't really think they're going to win constructors. But in my opinion, I think Max still has a great possibility of becoming the world champion. So, I mean, only time will tell. But if you can tell us, if you have any, who has been your favorite driver of all time? Of course, I am asking this in reference to the Michael Schumacher documentary. I don't know if you already watched it. No, I didn't watch it, but I would say that maybe I would say Hamilton, even if, uh, let's say that up to now, he always said maybe the best car, no? Because uh, otherwise, with the best driver need the best car. Yeah, I would say him anyway, because uh, I really like his, not sometimes, but I really like also what he plays like on the team radio that uh, like, oh, I have an issue just to let the other team knows that he's having an issue instead it's, uh, it's not real but uh, just to let the let they lose a bit their mind and um, yeah it's uh, it's funny also that and it's really intelligent as a as a driver to to do that for me that's actually true i mean he is the king of mind games and i feel mind games are a little bit necessary in the world of motorsports which is so funny because mercedes and red bull have such a different driving style mercedes is all about mind games and red bull is all about going for it they have such an aggressive driving style which i believe is what makes them actually be competing with mercedes this season even though well in case i'm a mexican and i was supporting chico perez so much this season but i don't think he's really performing the best every single race something happens to him that he ends up in a low position. Have you followed his career before? Yeah, but um, I don't think uh, he has the same car as his teammate. That's also the reason why maybe also he has to race against maybe, let's say, one of the best future world champions. It's like uh, Hamilton and Bottas. Hamilton is always far in front of Bottas. And like in, in those teams, if there is something better, like also a part of a rear wing or whatever, they put it to the driver number one, no? not to the driver number two. And that's also helpful, that driver, let's say. That's actually really true. I mean, you said the key word. I feel that in these two big teams, driver number two always tends to have a different car than driver number one. But I've noticed that this kind of unbalance in teams has only happened in the big teams. I mean, we see Ferrari. There's no really driver number one, even though it should be Jacques Leclerc. We have Carlos and Jacques at the same level. Lando and Daniel at the same level. It's like... As if every team had equal drivers except for Mercedes and Red Bull. In Checo's case, he knows he comes here as a defense and he's completing his role, let's say. But now that Valtteri Bottas is leaving, it's as if he's rebelling against Mercedes and he's proving to the world the real driver he's capable of being. What do you think about this? I think that yeah, Bottas in Alfa Romeo won't do that much. I mean, he will do the same as uh, Raikkonen and Giovinazzi now because, but not because it's not good, but just because the car is uh, it's like that. I mean, it's uh, it's obvious. Maybe they will develop and they will grow as McLaren did with Norris, in, but in two or three years' time. I mean, I'd, I would be really surprised if uh, Bottas would will won one race next year with Alfa Romeo. Right? That is so true. So true. So, Matteo, my previous guest actually has a question for you. He's a race control director in NASCAR. So the question my interview has for you is... ¿Cuál sería el consejo que le daría a los jóvenes para... para para llegar a hacer lo que él está haciendo y qué es lo que para él le ha representado este crecimiento que está teniendo a su edad. What advice would you give all the young drivers that are starting and how has this influenced your life at such a young age? What has this represented for you? Yeah, I think anyway, I mean, I'm coming from a family of racing drivers more or less because, uh, yeah, my auntie was racing, my daddy racing karting, Maybe that's something I had already in my blood when I, when I started uh, because, yeah, it was quite a unique feeling when I tried this, this little go-kart for the first time. Yeah, maybe it was also the only the other thing where I was good at because uh, football and basketball, I was really bad. <laughs> Instead, uh, from the outside, it looked like uh, I was much better at uh, driving a little go-kart. I am continuing just because of my passion to this right. world and I really like Formula Formula One, but all the racing cars, I really like them. 
also road cars. I mean, I want to make this passion my my job for when I will be older. And what advice would you give to the young driver? that are just starting my dad and my family they give me a lot of advices to continue my career and also to avoid the mistakes that maybe they've done in their their careers because that is the most important thing to to avoid the mistakes that they did and to be better prepared no? for for what the future will bring so basically to avoid mistakes and to learn from mistakes is that right yeah that's uh, the key i would say but this season mateo you actually got your first victory with formula three i mean i shared the news everywhere honestly i was so excited for you how did this make you feel what did this change in your career? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, it was really happy because uh, I went in that moment already really close to the victory twice in Barcelona. And so in the first round and in Red Bull, but then I had to retire just uh, quite a few laps to the end of the race, which is quite frustrating because, I mean, right. you are leading for a while and then you lose the possibility to get even a podium at just a couple of corners to the end. And that victory, I think that, I mean, the main difference was that I was able to pull a big gap from the car behind and so to manage the tires for the whole race. And uh, yeah, it was really cool also because uh, I think that in that race, especially that I was starting P3 and almost already in turn one, I was P1. I showed to the people outside that I say what type of driver I am and what uh, what they can do so yeah it was really a good moment of course i can imagine and i mean speaking about you being italian motorsports being in your family i feel that people normally relate motorsports to italy i feel that for example americans relate basketball to their country mexicans soccer but Whenever you tell me motorsports, I think of Ferrari. I think of Italy. I think of all of those things. Yeah. Italy plays such a big role in motorsports. So I do agree with you. I would love to see another Italian in Formula One, especially yeah, if that Italian is you, of course. Yeah. So, Matteo, before we finish today's interview, even though I don't want to leave, it's been so great talking to you. I want you to tell me one thing. This is a question I love asking all of my guests before we leave the interview. What do you think about W Series? Do you think that they created this competition for women to reach Formula One eventually or to segregate it? Because it's becoming such a strong category. Yeah, I think on one end, let's say that it's good because uh, let's say women, they race together instead of racing against a man let's say because if you race against a man you can say like physically it's not the same thing because of course if the car is hard to drive for us it's it's easier to to handle it i think that for sure it can help you a lot but also in that case i think that you need to have then the right connection to to those f1 teams like uh, like chadwick had already right. because uh, otherwise um, yeah for sure you will be become more famous popular i think or so they give a lot of price. If you win, you you win money also at the end of the year, which is the unique thing because in it's the only championship where up to now you you win money. Let's say okay. at the end of the year, and uh, this is really helpful also to continue your journey. It depends also on the driver itself. I mean, because it's, if it's that good, uh, for sure she will have her uh, possibility to to show it. Uh, hopefully, even in Formula One. Do you think a woman has? The opportunity of coming back to Formula One soon? Up to now, I don't know, because uh, as we have seen uh, every year, there are not a lot of seats available. Right. Like uh, maybe in a couple of years when when the older drivers, they will retire, there will be the chance to add, uh, to add more drivers. Because That's otherwise, so if there is just uh, one or two seats available per year, it's, uh, I think it's more difficult. That is so true. And if a woman were to join Formula One, who do you think it would be? I mean, uh, I would take, obviously, as a Team F1, we'll do the, the winner of the W Series championship. Right. championship. I mean, the champion. This, as this should be, so the champion can can make the, the step into Formula One. Definitely. I wouldn't take another uh, another one. That's a really smart answer, actually, because you didn't tell me yeah. a specific driver. You were like, the champion. <laughs> That's yeah. so nice. That's such a great answer. Very well thought. And the season, Jamie Chadwick and Alice Powell are really fighting for the championship. So let's see if Jamie Chadwick can take her second championship with W Series. 
and eventually see a woman in Formula One. So thank you so much, Mateo, for joining A Girl Talks Formula One today. It was such an honor having you. And it's so nice seeing you grow day by day. Let's hope that you will be the next Italian in Formula One. Yeah, and hopefully. Grazie mille. Grazie yeah, thank mille. you so much. It was really cool to spend uh, say half an hour with you. And <laughs> yeah, and thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody for joining the podcast today. We're reaching all the way to the end of the interview and see you again in two weeks on another episode of A Girl Talks Formula One. Ciao. Bye-bye, guys. Ciao. <laughs>